Hello everyone, uh, I'm Junjie Liao from Cornell, and the title of our work is Nonmalleability Against Polynomial Tempering. And this is a joint work with Marshall Bo and Tom Kim from Columbia, and my advisor Ishan Chattopadhyay, also from Cornell, and Liang Tan from Stanford. So first, uh, let me tell you what is a nonmalleable code. So nonmalleable code uh, is first introduced by Jimbowski, Piatrek, and Wicks in 2010. And it, it contains an encoding function and a decoding function. And we'll consider a temporary experiment which take an input message S and encode it into a code word C. And then there will be an adversary who tempers this code word C to a temper code word tilde C. And then we'll apply a decoding function on tilde C to get the temper message tilde S. So uh, our goal in this temporary experiment is we want to guarantee that uh, either the temper message S remains unchanged, or it becomes something unrelated to S, which means it gets destroyed by this temporary experiment. So formally, we will consider um, a temporary function family F, uh, which we want to protect against. And then we want to guarantee two properties. So the first one is the correctness, uh, which says if we take a message S, and then we encode it and decode it without any temporary, then what we get is exactly the same message. And the second property is a nominability, which says uh, for every function f, uh, there exists a simulator df uh, for the corresponding temporary experiment for f, which means the, the, the temporary message s will uh, be roughly equivalent to applying this um, simulator df on the original message s. And furthermore, this simulator df should be a distribution over identity function or constant function. So here, identity function means uh, the message will remain unchanged. And constant function means it will be changed to something completely unrelated. Uh, in other words, uh, the message gets destroyed by this temporary experiment. And a simple observation uh, here is it is impossible to construct a nonmalleable code which is secure against arbitrary tempering function f, because otherwise the adversary can just take the uh, tempering function to be uh, first decoding the code word to get the original message and change it to something related and then re-encode it. Then this will break the nominability. So some restriction on this tempering function family is necessary. And next, uh, we will see some tempering functions which have been considered in previous work. So the most well-studied one is probably the split state model. So in a split state model, a code word will be split into several parts, and the adversary is allowed to temper each part of the code word individually and arbitrarily. And there are a lot of great work in this line, and remarkably, a recent result by Agarwal and Obromsky shows that it is possible to construct a nominative code uh, with constant rate uh, in the two split state model. And another line of work which recently received more attention are the global tempering functions. So in a global tempering functions, we can apply, uh, the adversary can apply a function, tempering function on the whole code word. Um, however, there should be some restrictions on the tempering function that the adversary can apply. So some examples include uh, permutations and bit flipping, local functions, affine functions, small depth circuits, small depth decision trees. And uh, there are also some other uh, beautiful works uh, based on some possible cryptographic assumptions. But uh, in this talk, we will focus on, on conditional information theoretical results. So uh, the first result in our paper also falls in this category. So we construct a nominable code, which is secure against polynomials over a prime field FQ. And formally, we, uh, the code word in our nominable code will be n elements over a prime field FQ. And then the tempering functions will be degree D polynomials on n variables over the prime field FQ. So if the adversary choose uh, P1 to choose degree D polynomials P1 to Pn as a tempering function, then the tempered core will become P1x, P2x to Pnx. And our first result is we show that uh, for every integer m n d and a sufficiently large prime q, there exists a nonmalleable code which is secure against degree D polynomial tempering. 
And uh, interesting corollary of our result is uh, our non-level code actually also works for arithmetic circuits. So in the arithmetic circuits, uh, it's a circuit which takes some variables and some constants. And in this circuit, each gate will compute the product or the sum of its two inputs. And so we will consider the tempering function to be a size s arithmetic circuits on n variables over fq. And we define such a temporary function family to be E and QS. And here the size S is the number of gates in the arithmetic circuit. And it's not hard to see that uh, size S arithmetic circuits actually compute a polynomial with degree at most 2 to S. So this means this temporary function family E and QS is contained in F and Q 2 to S. So uh, our result for against polynomial tempering will also give a non-level code, which is secure against arithmetic circuits. Uh, so note that there is a, the restriction of the prime should be larger than a polynomial in 2 to es. However, the code, uh, the length of the code word is unlock q, which means uh, the length of the code word is actually only have a, a linear dependence on the circuit size S. So uh, this restriction on the prime Q is actually not uh, unreasonable. And uh, our second result is the nominable secret sharing. And before we introduce our result, first let's briefly review what is a secret sharing. So a secret sharing scheme is first introduced by Shamir and Blockley in 1979. And uh, in the T out of N secret sharing scheme, there are two functions, a shear function and a reconstruction function. And uh, a shear function will take the secret S and produce N shares. And we want to guarantee two properties. The first one is the correctness, which means given any T shares, we should be able to apply the reconstruction function on it to get to reconstruct the original secret. And the second property is a secrecy, which means if we are only given less than T shares, then these share together should reveal no information about the original secret S. And the recent work by Goyo and Kumar consider a non-malleable secret sharing, uh, which is basically a secret sharing scheme with an additional non-malleability guarantee. So in a non-malleable secret sharing, the, uh, we will consider an adversary who can temper the shares. And what we want to guarantee is uh, if we take T tempered shares and apply the reconstruction function on it to get a tempered secret, then this tempered secret should either uh, be identical to the original secret or it should become something unrelated to the original secret. So uh, similar to the nominable code, it is also uh, necessary to place some restriction on the tempering function that the adversary can apply. Otherwise, the adversary will be able to uh, like reconstruct the secret and then temper it, and then reshare this tempered secret, which will break the nominability. So uh, in prior works, uh, the most common tempering model is probably individual tempering. So in individual tempering, the adversary uh, can temper each share uh, individually and arbitrarily. So the first temper share will only depend on the first share, and the second temper share will only depend on second share, and so on. And there is also another model which have been considered is the joint tempering model. And in a joint tempering model, the adversary can split the shares into two disjoint sets. And then uh, the adversary can temper uh, the shares in each disjoint set um, jointly and arbitrarily. But uh, still, the temper share in the first set can only depend on the shares in the first set, and the temper share in the second set can only depend on the share in the second set. And finally, there's another model, uh, which is global tempering function. And in global tempering functions, we allow the adversary, uh, we, we allow each temper share to depend on all the input shares. However, we will place some restrictions on the uh, temporary function that the adversary can apply. So some examples include an affine temporary, uh, which is by Lin et al., and the composition of joint temporary and affine function, which is by Chattopati and Lee. 
And our second result is also falls in this category. We construct a non-minimal secret sharing, which is secure against a polynomial tampering over a prime field FQ. So our second result says for every uh, integer m and dt and some sufficiently large prime q, there exists a t out of a non-minimal secret sharing scheme for an m-bit secret against a degree d polynomial tampering. And furthermore, we actually give a stronger security guarantee. We allow the adversary to adaptively choose a tampering function. More precisely, the adversary can first take t minus one shares, and then use the information from these shares to choose a uh, to choose a, a tampering function f. Then the adversary will apply this tampering function on all the shares to pro, uh, to produce the tampered shares. And note that uh, each tampered share can still depend on all the input shares. However, this choice of the tampering function can only depend on t minus one shares. Otherwise, the adversary will be able to apply a reconstruction attack, which is impossible. And uh, so uh, this uh, adaptive choice of tempering function is actually a pretty strong security guarantee because uh, it allows the adversary to temper these t minus one shares jointly and arbitrarily. And furthermore, the adversary can use uh, some information from these shares to uh, choose some suitable tempering function for the other shares. So uh, the adversary can actually do a lot with this uh, adaptive choice. And uh, also, as a corollary, uh, this non-level state sharing also works for arithmetic circuits. And next, we will give a brief overview on how we get these two results. So both of our results are based on a C-less non-minimal effector against polynomial tampering, which we will introduce in the next slides. And then with this basic building block, we will apply the reduction by Chakshi and Guswami to get a non-minimal code. And then we will apply another uh, scheme by Lin et al. to get a non-minimal secret sharing. And uh, also, in order to apply uh, these two reductions, we also need an efficient inverter for this non-metal extractor, uh, which we believe to also contain some interesting new techniques. And also, uh, to achieve the adaptive security guarantee in our non-metal secret sharing, we actually uh, use the specific and non-trivial instantiation of the Lean et al. scheme. Uh, instead of just applying it as a black box. So uh, next, let me define what is the C-less non-metal extractor. So a C-less non-metal extractor is first uh, introduced by Chiyokchi and Guswami, and it is a function which will be applied on a source X to produce a distribution which is uh, close to uniform. And in other words, this is the randomness extractor. And furthermore, it needs to satisfy a non malleability guarantee, uh, which says uh, for every tempering function f from some tempering function family, uh, if we apply this tempering function f on the source to get a temporary source and feed this temporary source into the non malleable extractor, then what we get should be identical to the original output of the extractor, or it should be independent of the output of the extractor. So Chiyakshi and Guruswami show that if we have a non malleable extractor for uniform distribution, then this will imply a non malleable code. And uh, the encoding uh, against the same temporary function family. And the encoding function in this non malleable code uh, will be an inverter for this non malleable extractor, which takes a uniform sample from its pre image. And the decoding function will be uh, exactly this non malleable extractor. So our main result is we show that for every integer m and d and the sufficiently large prime q, there uh, we can construct an explicit C-less down level extractor, uh, which output the m, m bit string, and which works for a uniform distribution and secure against the degree d polynomial tempering functions. And furthermore, we also show that there exists an efficiently computable inverter for such number non-level extractor. 
So with these two results, we directly get the nominable code against polynomial tempering. And actually, uh, what we prove is a, a stronger result. So we show that this nominable extractor actually works for a skew affine source, which we will define in the next slide. And uh, this stronger result is actually important uh, to support the, the adaptive choice of tempering function in your nominable secret sharing. So uh, we say a source X is a skew affine source if it is a uniform distribution over an affine subspace. Uh, in other words, it is an affine source. And also, it needs to satisfy the property that uh, none of its coordinate is a constant. And another way to view this skew affine source is we can consider it as a uniform source conditioned on some affine leakage and which doesn't reveal any, any single coordinate xi. So uh, this view will be useful in our construction of nonlevel secret sharing because we will consider the of the shares leak to the adversary to be some affine leakage of this source. And more details can be found in our paper. And next we will give a brief overview of this uh, extractor construction. So uh, the construction of our extractor will be of the form uh, which first apply a low degree polynomial edge on the input x1 to xn and then we will take the less m bits of the output of edge to be our extractor output. And this construction has appeared several times in the context of extractors. And what we want to do here is we want to choose a, a proper polynomial edge such that it is, this extractor is actually non malleable So a first attempt will be uh, choosing this extractor to be the same as uh, the gabison ross extractor which works for a fine source over a large prime field. And in such extractor, this polynomial edge is taken to be the summation of xi to the ci for some uh, distinct integer c1 to cn. However, such extractor is actually not non-malleable because it is, not, it is vulnerable to a linear tempering attack. And uh, more precisely, we will choose some proper uh, constant beta i such that uh, beta i to the ci equals to some constant k, which is different from one. So uh, this will imply that if we uh, temper each xi to beta i xi, then the tempered output of edge will be exactly k times edge x. So uh, this, even after we truncate it to the less m bits, there will still be some correlation between the uh, original output of edge between the original output of the extractor and the tempered output of the extractor. So this will break the nominability. So uh, our next step is to try to change this construction to something different, which prevents this uh, linear attack. So we will choose H to be the summation of Xi to the Ci plus Xi to the Ci plus B, where B is the constant chosen to be co prime to Q minus one. And why we uh, set why we set uh, two terms for each xi and uh, make the difference of the degree to be b is because it uh, with such construction it is actually impossible to find a, a beta i such that beta i to the ci and beta i to the ci plus b uh, are the same and is different from one. So therefore, a linear attack doesn't work for this construction. And um, so. Actually, we will take an uh, edge to be uh, the summation of xi to the c2i minus one plus xi to the c2i, where ci is uh, a properly chosen arithmetic progression with the common difference being b. And uh, we don't have time to talk too much about uh, why we choose this, but we will give some brief ideas about uh, how we prove that this works. So uh, the basic proof idea is uh, first, we will use some uh, exponential sum techniques to show that uh, when this edge is taken to be a low degree polynomial, then the only possible correlation of the uh, real output and the tempered output is the linear correlation. 
uh, which we, we have seen in the, uh, like as in the linear attack for the original construction of Gavison Ross. And this can be proved using the well bound uh, from algebraic geometry and the generalized XOR lemma by Rao and Dodi et al. And then after proving this, we only need to show that uh, the, the polynomial edge we construct, uh, this will never happen for the polynomial edge we construct. So, uh, some, so we will do some case analysis, which we don't have time to go through, but uh, we will briefly talk about uh, like how we prevent all the possible attacks. So uh, first, having two terms for each xi will prevent uh, linear tampering, as we have seen in the previous slides. And then the choice of ci being the arithmetic progression will prevent the nonlinear tampering, uh, like such as quadratic tampering. And this is based on a lemma by uh, by the Veer, Gabizan, and Wickerson. And finally, uh, because we restrict the input affine source to be skewed. So this also prevents a tag which says some uh, which says some xi to be a constant. Okay. Uh, next, we'll briefly talk about uh, efficient inverter, which which will be the encoding function of the non-level code. So uh, know that our non-level extractor consists of uh, is a composition of a function sigma which truncates the left hand bit and the polynomial edge. So uh, to get the inverter for this. A uh, straightforward construction is to first take a preimage of sigma, uh, to which is y, and then we will take a preimage of h, uh, of y for y. And um, to so taking the preimage for sigma is trivial, and taking a preimage of a polynomial h can be based on an algorithm by uh, Triakchi and Shukulaki. However, there is a problem in this construction. So, uh, because we need a uniform preimage uh, from the the composition of sigma and h, so we actually cannot sample uh, this preimage y uniformly. Instead, we need to sample y with probability proportional to the preimage of uh, to the preimage size of y. But and a simple way to achieve this is by rejection sampling. And a similar approach has been adopted by uh, Chattopati and Zuckerman in the uh, in a, in a work which constructs a temp split state non-level code. Uh, however, this doesn't work in our setting because in our setting, uh, our polynomial edge works on n variables, and this n can be a uh, pretty large. And, and a large n will be uh, especially useful in our construction of non-level non secret sharing. And computing the preimage size of edge will be expensive. So in order to solve this problem, we will actually temp, uh, we observe that the, the algorithm by Trajectory and Chocolahi is also a rejection sampling. So we can embed this rejection sampling step uh, into the Trajectory Chocolahi algorithm. So we are actually applying a rejection sampling on the on this uh, on this composition of sigma and edge. Okay, finally, uh, we briefly go through uh, how the uh, non-level secret sharing scheme works. So the Linet O scheme works by first uh, taking the shear function to be first applying an inverter for the non-level extractor to get x, then take the uh, erasure the encoding function of the erasure code. To produce n shares, and so in our setting, it will be uh, we will take the non-level extract to get a t out of n secret sharing. We will take a non-level extractor which works on t elements in the prime field F Q, and then we will use the uh, er uh, erasure code which produce n shares of uh, prime element uh, of uh, n to which produce n element in the prime field F Q, and also we will take this. Uh, encoding decoding function to be a systematic MDS code, and this will actually uh, implies that uh, any any t minus one share together will be uh, some affine leakage for x, which doesn't reveal any single coordinate in, in x i. So in other words, condition on these shares, the the source x will still be a skew affine source. So the nominability still applies. And finally, uh, we go through some open problems arise from this work. 
So the first open problem, uh, so the first future direction will be uh, trying to improve the parameters uh, in our non-level code and secret sharing, such as improving the information rate or the error. And the second interesting open problem would be uh, trying to achieve non-malleability against polynomial over uh, a field with smaller characteristics, uh, such as F2. And uh, note that uh, we, this should, uh, if this is possible, then this should be very different from our approach because our approach rely on uh, Wales bound, uh, which is only non-trivial when the, uh, over a large prime field. And finally, uh, it will also be interesting to achieve non-malleability against other polynomial, uh, other global tempering functions, uh, especially those which already have some interesting average case for bond, such as uh, small width branching programs or AC0 circuit with parity gates, etc. Thank you for your attention.